Welcome. My name is Brett Little. I'm the executive director here at the uh, nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. Green Home Institute has a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. And we've been headquartered right in Grand Rapids uh, since 2000. We're so excited to be bringing you behind the scenes on uh, single family homes, multi-family mixed use, new construction, gut renovations uh, on our green building tours. So I hope you'll join us as we interview uh, architects, uh, builders, homeowners, developers, energy raters, and really ask them questions as to how and why uh, they are committed to uh, green building in their projects. All of our courses are approved for continuing education in GBCI, AIA, HSW, Nary Green, Certified Green Professional, Certified Green Home Professional, BPI Non-Whole House, and they may be applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. This particular course is also approved for uh, LEED Accredited Professional in Homes. And to get your continuing ed, make sure you take the quiz uh, while you watch the video or after the video and get an 80% passing rate. And don't forget you can always watch any previous videos anytime at our website and our YouTube channel. All right, so one aspect of green building and the Green Star program is obviously a focus on energy efficiency, uh, getting energy use down, getting utility bills down, saving energy, saving money, being comfortable. Um, and so uh, obviously this home has already been built, and so it's very difficult to be able to see anything behind the walls, but Neil's got some great diagrams here where he's gonna kind of take us through the energy efficiency strategies he used to um, cut the utility bills in this house. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's a section of, uh, of the house through this, actually through this room that we're standing in. Um, in here, in the, I don't know if you can see that in this, but there's a red line and then there's a blue line around the whole house. The blue is the moisture barrier and the red is the air barrier. So we have, um, we have about R47 walls and about an R68 uh, roof assembly here. And in, also you can see the butterfly roof structure with the trusses, a curved truss, a flat area, and then a straight truss here, which acts as the structural, um, f structural basis for the solar collectors, which are facing due south. And uh, then also you can see the large overhang, which is eight foot, where in if we, I have some diagrams showing how the sun at this time of year is up here, so that, so that the, it shades completely, so there's no sun going into the house at all uh, during the day. So, and then the large window assembly on the south side, so that in the winter time, it, it receives a lot of sun with the concrete floor, which acts as a thermal um, heat sink and also contains the radiant heat system for the house, which heats the house. So, um, and we have two major beams running down the middle of the house that pick up these roof loads. Um, and um, that um, is, a, in a nutshell, um, the design of the house and it's so you've got a lot of passive uh, working here a lot of passive principles at work here so uh, so the house is actually a solar collector that is the always the goal of a passive house is to have the house act as a solar collector hold it keep it use it and in the summertime keep the solar out so there's um, so it's so that was the basic design from the beginning uh, of uh, in the design of the house. Um, what uh, uh, from keeping the sun out during the summertime? Do you have a reflectivity on the shingles at all? Did you use that? No. Well, they're white. Yeah, they're white. Okay. Um, um, we thought about doing a metal roof, but uh, the cost was double the cost. Sure. And I, I would have had a white roof, metal roof, but in this particular case, we used white shingles, which right. has a degree of reflectability. And I don't know what the SRI is right offhand, but mm -hmm. I think it's in the 70s, so yeah. 60s, 70s. Um, as far as the slab, how does that work with um, 
with uh, solar coming in, uh, natural sunlight coming in in the wintertime? It, uh, this, this slab is never cold. Right. I walk around a lot in my bare feet in the wintertime. Um, so it's, we, um, we poured it black. The, I ordered the concrete black when we poured it and it turned out kind of be a charcoal and we added a stain, uh, another, some more black stain to it with a, in the finish coat of it, which uh, it's a, essentially, a, it's a very dark floor so it absorbs the sun well. And it never overheats in the summertime, right? Doesn't seem to. Yeah. I mean, the sun doesn't hit it, so. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've got your passive solar built in. You've got a really tight envelope. Um, oh, I forgot to ask you, what, what is your air changes per hour on the house? It's 1.2. 1.2, so very tight. Uh, energy efficient envelope. So what are you doing to um, heat and cool the home besides using the free sunlight? Okay, so we have, um, well, Here's a schematic of the solar hot water uh, system, which is interfaced with the, um, with the heating system, the, with the radiant heating system that's in the floor. Um, it says, in the schematic, it says boiler. What we're actually using for a boiler is an um, electric hot water heater, 80-gallon uh, electric hot water heater. And then we have a hot water tank uh, in, the, in the basement with uh, some uh, heat exchangers for both uh, to heat hot water for domestic hot water and also for radiant. So this system heats, water f uh, heats up water for domestic hot water and also for the radiant heat in the floor. Mm -hmm. And there's pumps and controls to, to uh, that pumps all of the domestic, or it pulls the, for when the domestic hot water heater says it needs uh, water, it, it doesn't pull cold water, it pulls water from the solar hot water, it pulls water through the solar hot water tank, and then when the house says it needs heat, it pulls, it brings the water through the solar hot water tank, again to heat the water up before it goes into the radiant heat in the floor. Is this a uh, heat pump or just? Uh, no, this is a, a, a heat pump, um, hot electric hot water heater. Okay, so it is a heat pump. Well, it, it's a hybrid. Uh, oh, okay, hybrid uh, one, yep. Hybrid uh, hot water, electric hot water heat. So this home isn't like normal homes. We've got ducts running through. Um, yes. And, and as far as the heating and cooling. That's correct. Goes. We do have uh, a small duct system for an ERV system. And that. that's energy recovery ventilation? Yeah, that's an energy recover, recovery ventilation system because we have to mechanically ventilate this house. And is that running uh, all the time? That's running um, this time of year. I, I don't have it with, I leave windows open, so I don't have it run maybe 50% of the time, mm -hmm. but in the winter it's running 100% of the time. Running, okay. Do you remember the efficiency on the, on the ERV? Like the I don't right offhand. Okay. Uh, is there a reason you use the ERV versus HRV? I know some people. Um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I was recommended to use an ERV. Okay. So that's what we've done. Right. It helps on the humidity levels in the house. Okay. And is that um, also ventilating the bathroom? or do those Yes, it ventilates the bathrooms, the kitchen, the entire house. Okay, so you don't need a separate... Uh, I do not have separate bath fans. Yep, yep. Um, and just looking at the HVAC system too, uh, what, did you uh, did you explore, you know, um, ducted systems versus this systems or heat pump um, HVAC systems, uh, or was this just kind of like, yep, this is the way to go? Um, well, being a general contractor, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of different kinds of HVAC systems, mm -hmm. and because of the design of the house with the butterfly roof and so forth. I, we could have put a duct system in, but it would have added, there would have been some technical difficulties. Um, I would have had to make the duct runs much larger down the middle of the house than I did. Um, and what about uh, geothermal? Did you explore that? Um, I considered it, but very uh, shortly. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of geothermal. 
Um, some people might say, why not? And I would say that if you insulate well enough and thorough enough, you don't need that expensive of a system to heat and cool your house. Right. It isn't expensive because you have to dig wells and do all of that. And it could have been easily installed here. There would have been no difficulty. Right, just the cost of drilling. And, well, but it, you know, it, 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 it would have been maybe two or three times the cost of my solar system plus all the other stuff. So, I, so I, it was not a, a serious consideration at all. Okay. Um, I do see on uh, one of the stands here you also aren't, besides using mechanical ventilation, you're using natural ventilation. So Absolutely. Well, I have windows uh, on the north side of the house, high, yeah. very, very, rather small, but I, we can open and close those. And I also have windows high up there in, the, in this part of the house, and then I have windows low, so I can get cross ventilation between in the house at all times and I have ceiling fans to uh, assist that and it works okay are you able to get to those with a, without a ladder or? no okay. I, I actually have I made a pole to open and close them there you go <laughs> um, great great uh, well let's talk about the final piece of uh, solar okay here, which, sure um, all right so we we've got uh, a tight shell passive solar uh, energy efficient HVAC so obviously the last thing to do is put on a little bit of solar energy um, so talk a little bit about your, your solar systems and how they work. Okay, so I have a 3 point, actually it's showing 3.3 on this, 3.36 uh, um, watt system. Actually, I, we added, uh, I think, one uh, more uh, panel and we're at 3.6 uh, system. Um, and it's a, you know, a PV system generating electricity. We're on the grid. So I'm selling this back to ComEd, um, and um, it's, it's been working fine. Um, also, I'm able to sell the, the electricity that I generate on a, uh, on a market, and people are buying uh, credits uh, uh, for the, uh, the solar-generated uh, electricity. So, um, in the year April 17 to April or 1st of May uh, of this year, 2018, we, um, we used about 11,000 um, kilowatts and I generated, uh, I think, close to 2,000 and it cost me about $1,200 last year totally to pay ComEd and I uh, was paid like $850 or, or something in that. So my total cost of, to, for electricity, which is all my utility energy cost for the year was $333 for last year, uh, which averages out to about $28 per month. So we, even though this house was designed as a net, to, to be a net zero, passive net zero house, we haven't quite achieved that. We're pretty close. Um, I'm considering of adding some more PV panels in order to achieve that. Yeah, so you were, uh, you were telling me, um, looking at some different strategies earlier um, about uh, how to reduce your load and one that you came across with just how long you ran your heating system when you weren't here um, versus turning it off or leaving it on. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, this is a country house. So uh, I live in Chicago and I'm still working, so I have, I have a job, so I'm working in Chicago. And I'm usually down here, well, sometimes come down on Thursday nights or, and I'll stay the weekend or whatever. So in the previous year, from um, the same time period, from uh, April of 16 to April of uh, 17, I, I, kept, I tracked um, all of the electrical uh, usage and what we were doing is when I went home on Sunday nights, I would usually turn off the, uh, the system. And then usually Thursday morning or thereabouts, uh, since I have a smart thermostat, I would turn the system back on before we came down. But because the system operates in a concrete slab here, it takes a long time to heat up the slab 
after it's cooled down. So there's a long lead up to bring the slab back up to temperature, which sometimes takes 12 to 24 hours. So what was happening is the house temperature was, there was quite a bit of this going on. And so in talking with um, a mechanical engineer about this issue, he recommended that we leave the heat on all the time, not turn it off at all. And that's what I did this past year. And uh, the energy costs were less, which is, you might say intuitively that uh, that wouldn't happen. But in this case, that way the house is doing more like this, not doing this. So it takes a lot of energy to bring it back up to the temperature that you want it. So, um, so I've learned a little bit on how to live in the house. Also, uh, this year I'm learning to live with heat and how to handle that better. And uh, we, uh, when I'm down here, I open the house up at night, turn the fans on, cools the house off. And then in the daytime, if I'm here, I close the shades, close the windows, and the house stays, doesn't get above uh, 78, 79 degrees. Um, Even if it's 95 outside. Wow. So you, you said uh, you're about 11,000 plus for the year? Is that... I was 10,9 actually. 10,9, okay. Yeah, so um, just under. And that would probably be what, like a, a 9 kW system ish? Correct. Kind of Right. So where would you, uh, is there still room on your roof? Where would oh, you that's, the, that's the big issue. Okay. I would probably have to remove maybe a couple of my, my radiant heat system panels and then add some PV. Okay. So you're saying maybe the radiant heat system is a little over? Is over, heat. yeah. I maybe got too much capacity on that. Okay. Interesting. So, because um, I have six panels for the radiant heat system. All right. So these are some of the... Uh, tweaks that one can get involved in and once you start living in a uh, very energy efficient passive uh, house. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll share that with us as you do it and we can keep everybody up to date. On That's right. What you did and what you learned. Yes. Great. Uh, so I noticed the wood stove over here and I know um, wood burner and uh, are you using that to supplement any of the heating in this house or um, you know what other ways can you explain its design as far as um, you know ensuring good, you know it doesn't reduce the air quality of the home? Well, it's a first of all, I don't need it for heating the home. Um, it is it is it's more of an aesthetic choice uh, than a uh, actual need for for heat in the house, and it's a totally closed combustion um, cast iron wood stove. Okay. So I'm not using obviously any, um, there's a, you can see the uh, pipe going outside for the fresh air right. for combustion. So I'm not using any house air for combustion. Mm -hmm. um, it's really nice. It actually, you know, almost drive you out of the room it, it, at times because it gets so warm in here mm -hmm. when I am, ha when I do have a fire. Right. So, but it's nice to have a fire, you know, and yep. there's snow on the ground and outside and, you know, aesthetically it's, uh, it's, it's lovely. So, and I know that the Passive House Institute wouldn't certify my house because if, with this in here, <laughs> but uh, I personally don't think it detracts from the, uh, uh, from the effectiveness of the passive house um, design and uh, features that I do have here. Sure. Well, thanks for joining us and a big thanks to uh, our volunteers, our board of directors, our members, and our sponsors who allow us to do what we do. A huge thanks to our top sponsors, T-Stud, who make um, insulated studs that help save energy and money in the walls, and Shrinergy, who have uh, microgrid solutions uh, and portable battery and solar solutions for emergency issues, for travel, uh, and for backup energy and saving energy at home. Check them out. And make sure to go to our website, greenhomeinstitute.org. Again, check out all of our videos and upcoming session and live webinar events. Thank you.